So we've already talked about the form tags and everything. We've briefly talked about the action and the method. I'm just going to reiterate on that real quick. The action is where it goes. The action is a URL for where it goes. So let's put the action to w.wikipedia.org and then with a make a get request. So input could be text and placeholder equals search. If we're wanting to search Wikipedia, this might be a form that we could set up on our own website to get Wikipedia results. And then a button. We'll say make it say search. Save and refresh. And now we're making a search. Notice that the action is now wikipedia.org. So we might search for cats. Hit search and it pulls up wikipedia.org. So it makes a get request to wikipedia.org, but it's not passing along our data. It's not passing along what we actually type into the search, and that's fine. That's not a problem yet. We're going to talk about later how you can do that. Um, but all I wanted to illustrate there is that whatever you put here is where it will send that request. So if we leave this out entirely, this URL, save and refresh, we submit this form, it just goes right back to the exact same page. So search, it goes back to the exact same page. You saw that full page refresh. It put in the little question mark to indicate that there's a query with some data, but it has no data because we haven't set that up yet, and it just goes right back to that same page. That's what I wanted to illustrate. This action is where it goes. The second part of this video is I want to talk about how you can get your data out of the form. So right now this is getting data, but it's not doing anything with it. In order to do anything with your data, you have to give it a name. Name equals, you might say, query, because this is a search query. So let me go ahead and refresh and call search for cats again. Now you'll notice it's got the URL, but here it's a little bit different. It's got that data in there. Query equals cats. It's got that question mark and then it has query equals cats. If I put in a second one here where the name is, um, I don't know, date, make it a date picker, refresh, cats, and put the dates of, I don't know, yesterday, and search, it'll do the same thing, but now we'll get two pieces of data, query equals cats and date equals the date, the timestamp, the date stamp rather. And this whole URL, this structure right here, it has the whatever URL, then it has a question mark, then it has these key value pairs, where the key query is whatever you named it here. Make this a bit bigger so we can see easier. The query equals cats, so query here is whatever I put into this search field because that's the input. And then date is where it comes from right here, that's the key. And the value is whatever date I picked on the date picker. If I searched for Catalina, date of there, and submit, you'll notice my query is now Catalina. And the date is now February 5th. So that's how you can get your data. It's going to come through in the URL. Now, obviously, this is very bad if you're going to try and submit passwords or any sensitive data. There's a better way to do that. There's another way to do that. And we're going to get to that. But for right now, this is how you're going to get your data out of the forms. You can use the name attribute. And these name attributes are unique. If you put two things with the same query and query, refresh the page, type in whatever, pick a date, search, query equals this, and query equals that. You're going to have a lot of problems parsing that on the back end because you're going to have two things that have the same key. That's not going to play nice. Do not ever have two of the same names. So you might have um, animal or whatever. And the type could be here. We can do color and pick our favorite color. And I want it to be green. Sure. Search. So now that I've searched, you can see the query is the random string I typed in and color is that color. So that's how the naming works for forms. Whenever you have an input, you have to give it a name. There's a lot of different input types. You gotta give them all names. There's drop downs, there's radio buttons, and we'll get to all that in a bit. Um, but they all have to have a name if you wanna use that data in any way. That's it for now. Thank you much, have a good one.